<laughs> Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. Do you ever wonder why you turned out the way you did? <laughs> I often question why I was such a quirky kid and an even quirkier adult. My grandfather was a magician. He performed with precision and would pull invisible things out of the air and make ordinary objects like handkerchiefs or flowers appear and disappear. He played a major role in shaping the person I am and my outlook on life and instilled a sense of wonder in me. I guess I started out normal enough. This is a photo of my, <laughs> me with my younger sister Pam at the top. And then in this picture with my mom, I was around 11 years old and some funky get up. I don't know what it was for, but probably a skit or puppet show that I would do for my three younger siblings. And then they would get in on the act too. And our older brother wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> uh, this is a shadow box of my grandfather. It has his magic wand, his silk handkerchiefs, and playing cards and his portrait. So this has one of my favorite quotes by Anonymous. Families are like fudge, mostly sweet with a few nuts. <laughs> Only my family has a lot of nuts. <laughs> In the top photo, that's 1972 with my grandmother in the bottom corner and my mom and dad and then my four siblings and me and then here is a silly totem pole shot of my dad and my sisters and myself <laughs> here's dad when he was 69 years old riding a little clown bike my nephew's clown bike at a family get-together he just had to get in and try it rode it out on the sidewalk and then my mom borrowed my funky glasses and Billy Bob teeth, and she had a wig of her own, and so she was dressing up for one Halloween. In high school, I took typing at shorthand and graduated in 1974. So class of 74 has more. <laughs> <laughs> This, the top part of this note is Greg Shorthand. I still use Greg Shorthand and typing, of course, today. It says, I love Greg Shorthand. Still comes in handy these days when I am in a hurry. <laughs> so, I met my husband, George, when I was a senior in high school. And we tied the knot in 1976, the year of America's bicentennial. I was 20 and he was 24. <laughs> With his quick wit and his one-liners, it turned out George is a clown too. So we make a good match. And he's still pretty funny. He gets our grandchildren going. I went to court reporting college two nights a week while I worked full-time as a secretary right out of high school. As soon as I graduated, I got hired full-time. So I took shorthand and typed letters and financial year-to-date reports and answered phones, to, um, filing, all the secretarial duties, and then went to court reporting college two nights a week. So in 1979, I was certified as a shorthand reporter, and I preferred to take depositions a few days a week rather than be in a courtroom all day, all week long, because uh, working part-time as a court reporter was a great job to be a mother and raise children and have time at home to be with them and volunteer at the school. So, we had our first baby in 1980. 
I wanted to have six children, and George wanted two. So we compromised <laughs> and had four. <laughs> Michael, April, Amy, and Susie. I'm eight months pregnant in this picture. And by the time I had the fourth baby, I was so tired, I, didn't, I couldn't have had any more kids anyways. I was a working mother, it was exhausting. <laughs> but family life agreed with me. There was lots of clowning around all the time, especially when they're little. This is at my son's fourth birthday party. I dressed up as Buffy the Clown, and these are, just, these are the relatives, the nephews and niece, and then my daughter April and son. There, was, there were a lot more kids at that party, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Quirky genes passed from one generation to the next, and life was never boring, as you can imagine. When I turned 40, I had a light bulb moment while reading James and the Giant Peach to my middle daughter, Amy. I realized that I loved children's stories and I wanted to be a writer too for children. That decision opened a whopping can of worms. I mean, challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Which I will cover in a future speech because there's way too much to get into now. But all my hard work paid off. And these are some of my published works under my name, Lynn Kelly. This was my first one, Mary as a Cricket, was published in 2002. And then this middle one is an ebook with three short stories. Then Curse of the Double Digits is for children age 7 to 10. A story, The Hobo Tree, was in Highlights for Children magazine, and I was, I was nominated Author of the Month for that article. And then on the end, Kiss by an Angel is an anthology of short stories. I wrote one and pretty much edited the book. It was put together as a fundraiser for the Sturge Weber Foundation, a charity. Some of my writer friends and I got together and decided to co-author some children's books. The Monster Moon series are spooky, fun adventure books, and these are the first three. Now, there is a character in these books, the children's favorite character, who is a talking rat. <laughs> he is uh, on each cover, there he is right there, Vlad. He is a 300-year-old talking pirate rat. And why is he able to talk? We well, find out in the middle of the first book. There, he used to be a parrot for a pirate on a ship 300 years prior. But then he had a brain transplant from his parrot brain into a rat. So poor, <laughs> poor Vlad, Arr, he is not happy about that. But he makes do. <laughs> this is BBH McChiller, our pen name for the Monster Moon series. And there's me, Catherine Sant, and Maria Cisneros Toth. The three of us wrote the first two books, and then Maria has moved on to other projects, and Kathy and I are still continuing on with the Monster Moon books. There are two more in the works. So as a working mother, Life was crazy, busy, getting the kids to school on time. At one point, I had three stops in the morning, three different schools, getting myself to work on time, volunteering at the school, getting the kids to church, and karate, baseball, tennis, birthday parties, on and on and on. And one day they were little, and then poof! They were all grown up. And it's like, whoa. And now it's happening with the grandchildren. In 2010, our first grandchild was born, Twinkle Eyes. My daughter-in-law invited me to be there for the birth, and it was one of the most joyful events of my life. 
we love being Gramps and Grammy. Grandparenting is full of rewards and blessings like this tender moment of our son with his daughter. By 2014, all four of our children had met their soulmates and four of our grand darlings were with us. Then there were five. <laughs> this is Chatty Girl, Ninja Doll, Grasshopper, Sweet Pea, and Twinkle Eyes. <laughs> Little Man is number six. He was born in November. That's my mom with her 19th great-grandchild. <laughs> and George and I say, keep them coming. <laughs> and that's exactly what Susie is doing. Susie Q is pregnant with her first child, and she's due in August. And it's a boy. <laughs> he will be the 20th great-grandchild in our seventh child. All the grandkids are little clowns. It's in their genes. That's G-E-N-E-S. <laughs> Life is wonderful despite all the ups and downs. There are many stories itching to be told. I have lots of quirky stories with more quirky characters to share with you, and I hope you will share your stories with me, fellow Toastmasters.